A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 25th of September 2023. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. We have chosen news articles from yesterday's newspaper as well. So without much delay, let us get into the first news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. Yesterday, the Buddhavanam team from Telangana visited the 3rd century BC Buddhist rock cut cave at Mateli in Sri Lanka. See, this site is so special because in the site, the teachings of Lord Buddha were scribbled for the first time on palm leaves. Know that Buddhavanam is a massive Buddhist heritage theme park developed by the Telangana government at Naharjuna Sahar. So, to obtain some valuable information for the theme park, our team visited the Buddhist rock at cave in Sri Lanka. This is about the news article given here. So, in this context, let us quickly revise some of the important Buddhist text, which is very important for preliminary examination. See, the Buddhist texts are mostly based on the life and teachings of the Buddha. Know that Buddha mostly followed discussion and debate method of teaching. Basically, Buddha taught to his disciples orally. None of the speeches of Buddha were written down during his lifetime. After Buddha's death, around 5th to 4th century BCE, his teachings were compiled by his disciples. These compilations were known as tripitakas, which literally means three baskets that holds different types of text. The tripitaka were first transmitted orally and later they were written and classified according to the subject matter. The Tripitakas refer to Vinaya Pitaka, Sutta Pitaka and Abhidhamma Pitaka. They were written in Pali language. Know that each Pitaka is comprised of number of individual text. Now let us quickly see in detail about the Pitakas one by one. First let us take Sutta Pitaka. In Sanskrit, Sutta means Sutra. It was compiled at the first Buddhist council that was held during 483 BC. The Sutta Pitaka was first orally presented by Ananda, who is Buddha's cousin. The Sutta Pitaka contains the core teachings of Buddhism. So basically, the Sutta Pitaka contains the sutras of Buddha's teachings. The Sutta Pitaka consists of five sutras, which are displayed here. You can go through it. Now, coming to Vinaya Pitaka, See, the Vinaya Pitaka was also compiled at the first Buddhist council. It was orally presented by Upali, who is one of the ten chief disciples of the Buddha. The Vinaya Pitaka consists mainly of rules and regulations that govern the daily life of Buddhist monks and nuns. The Vinaya Pitaka consists of three different texts which are displayed here. You can go through it. Now, finally, let us see about Abhidhamma Pitaka. See, the Abhidhamma Pitaka is a later work. It mostly contains physiological matters of Buddhism. The Abhidhamma Pitaka lists out various summaries and questions and answers on Buddhist philosophy. The Abhidhamma Pitaka consists of seven books which are displayed here. You can pause the video and go through it. So, these are all some of the three important texts in Buddhism. As Buddhism travelled to new regions like Sri Lanka, some other texts were also written between 3rd and 5th century AD. The important texts of that time were Dipavamsa and Mahavamsa. These texts were written in Pali language in Sri Lanka. It contains the regional histories of Buddhism and biographies of the Buddha. So these are all some of the important Buddhist texts that you have to remember in the problems perspective. There are still many of them left out. But if they appear in the current affairs, we'll let you know. So these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article from yesterday's newspaper. See, last Saturday in New York, the external affairs minister, Mr. S. Jayashankar, met with his Brazilian and South African counterparts. The meeting was held as part of the IBSA forum. The meeting was aimed to further strengthen South-South cooperation. Know that... The External Affairs Minister is in New York to address the 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly UNGA. This is about the news article given here. So in this context, let us understand some points about the IBSA forum. First of all, know that IBSA stands for India, Brazil and South Africa. 
the IBSA forum is a trilateral forum that brings together three large democracies and major economies from three different continents like Asia, South America and Africa. See basically IBSA forum is a dialogue forum that facilitates ease of communication between India, Brazil and South Africa. By doing this the IBSA promotes South South cooperation. The forum also aims to increase the trade opportunities among the three countries. Apart from this the forum also seeks to facilitate the trilateral exchange of information, technologies and skills to complement each other's strength. Now that the IBSA grouping was formalized on 6th June 2003 when the foreign ministers of the three countries met in Brasilia which is the capital city of Brazil. After the formulation the group was named the IBSA Dialogue Forum. Know that the IBSA Forum does not have a permanent secretariat. Now talking about the cooperation area of the IBSA Forum. See the cooperation in IBSA is focused on three areas. Firstly, the IBSA acts as a forum for consultation and coordination on global and regional political issues. Secondly, the forum encourages trilateral collaboration on concrete areas through working groups and people to people forum. And finally, the forum assists other developing countries by taking up projects in the developing countries through IBSA fund. So these are all the cooperation areas of the IBSA forum. Now talking about the important components of IBSA forum. See the first one is IBSA trust fund. See this fund was established jointly by India, Brazil and South Africa in 2004. However the fund came into operation in 2006. Through the trust fund the IBSA aims to elevate poverty and hunger in developing countries by supporting South cooperation development projects. Since its inception, the IBSA has allocated over 44 million USD of funds. The funds are supporting over 39 development projects in 34 partner countries. Note that the majority of the beneficial countries are least developed countries, LDCs. The second important component is IBSA MAR. IBSA MAR stands for India Brazil South Africa Maritime. The IBSA MR is basically a joint multinational maritime exercise. It aims to strengthen maritime security cooperation between the three countries. Note that the recent 7th edition of IBSA MR was held at Port Elizabeth in South Africa from 10 to 12 October 2022. Now coming to the final component. The final component is IBSA Visiting Fellowship Program. This program aims to promote academic exchange of young scholars in the field of economic and social sciences. So this program strengthens research collaboration among India, Brazil and South Africa in the spirit of South-South cooperation. So these are all some of the important points that you have to remember about IBSA. So these learned points. Now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. It talks about the surveillance operations conducted by the Forest Department in Mukurthi National Park. The surveillance was aimed to ensure that there is no illegal movement of people and poachers in National Park. This is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us quickly go through Mukurthi National Park from the prelims perspective. Firstly, let us see where this particular National Park is located. See, Mukurthi National Park is a 78.46 square kilometer protected area located in the western corner of the Nilgiris Plateau region of the Western Ghats. It is located in the northwestern part of Tamil Nadu. Actually, this park is a part of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve, which is a first biosphere reserve of India. The location of MNP is situated between the Silent Valley National Park and Mudumalai National Park. I hope you can see that in the image given here. Now let's quickly see about the significance of this particular national park. See it was established with the aim to conserve its keystone species which is the Nilgiri Thar. Here keystone species is nothing but a species which is essential for the survival of other species in the ecosystem. Apart from this MNP is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The national park was formerly known as Nilgiri Thar National Park. And it is also home to Mukurthi Peak, which is 2,554 meters height. 
It is the fourth highest peak in the Nilgiri Hills. Apart from this, as we saw earlier, it is a part of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve, which consists of Mukurthi National Park, Mudumalai Wildlife Sanctuary, Bandipur National Park, Nagaholi National Park, Vayanad Wildlife Sanctuary, and Silent Valley National Park. Now let's quickly see about the rivers flowing through the national park. See river Paikara and river Kunda and other perennial streams flows through the park and drains into the river Bhavani Pula. Talking about the flora, it mainly consists of mountain vegetation of grasslands and shrublands interspaced by Shola grasslands. The national park houses the trees of rhododendrons, raspberries, cinnamon and blackberries and etc. The national park also has various endemic plant species that is present only in this national park like Alchemilla indica and Hediotis verticillaris. Moving on to the faunal diversity of the national park. See the national park is home to some of the endangered wild species like Nilgiri Thar, Bengal Tiger, Indian Elephant, Nilgiri Langur and Bonnet Macaque. It also has many species of birds like Malabar Whistling Thrust, Nilgiri Wood Pigeon, Black and Orange Flycatcher, Nilgiri Flycatcher, Parrot Vultures and Nilgiri Pipit. Remember one of the most important tribal population of Mukurthi National Park is Todas. Todas are a pastoral tribe of the Nilgiri Hills. They actually reside inside the national park. Okay. These are all some of the important points that I have to remember about Mukurthi National Park. So these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article from yesterday's newspaper. According to the news article, Union Minister for Communications, Electronics and Information Technology announced that two significant semiconductor projects are currently in progress and it will be released in the coming months. The US chip maker Micron Technology, which is a leading manufacturer of memory chips, have invested in India to build a chip packaging plant in Gujarat. The total investment for this project is $2.75 billion. Micron will contribute up to $825 million in two phases, while the remaining investment will come from the central and state governments. So this is about the news article given here. So in this context, let us see about the steps taken by government to develop chip manufacturing sector and we will also see what are all the challenges faced by this sector. Firstly, let us see why the chip industry is important for India. See, the global demand for semiconductors is expected to grow significantly in the coming years due to the rise of new technologies like artificial intelligence, 5G and the Internet of Things. India is well positioned to become a major player in the global semiconductor industry as it has a strong talent pool and growing demand for semiconductors. India is a major hub for semiconductor design because 20% of the world's semiconductor design engineers are Indians. Now let us see what are all the steps taken by the government in this regard. See in 2021, the Indian government launched the Design Linked Incentive DLI scheme. This scheme provides financial support to domestic chip design companies and aims to indigenize innovations in the semiconductor design industry. The goal is to create at least 20 companies in India with a turnover of more than 1500 crore rupees in the next five years. The DLI scheme is open to Indian companies, startups and MSMEs. To be eligible for the scheme, companies must have at least 50% of their employees as Indian nationals and must have a registered office in India. Another important thing to notice, recently the Indian government said it would have an equity stake in domestic chip making companies. When a government has an equity stake in a company, it means that the government owns a portion of the company's shares. The reason here is to support strategic industries. The government aims to ensure a stable ecosystem by building fabulous companies. Here the fabulous companies simply mean the companies that design chips but outsource the manufacturing. Note that the semiconductor industry is capital intensive and requires a long term strategy. 
according to experts the government's attempt to invest in the shares of chip companies is likely to be ineffective and inefficient but still this equity infusion by the government would be encouraging for local small and medium sized companies even though the government is taking many steps to strengthen the chip industry there are some challenges faced by these companies first important challenge is the lack of venture capitalist there are very few venture capitalists from the private sectors who focus on the semiconductor industry secondly the cost of designing a chip is very high and this can be a barrier for new companies entering into the market despite this high cost of designing the annual revenue of domestic chip design companies is estimated at only 150 crore rupees only this is very less revenue compared to the potential of india's talent and demand finally the higher gestation period in the chip industry is a major challenge for it here the gestation period refers to the time taken to develop and bring a new chip to market this period can be quite long often taking several years because of complexity in chip designing due to this reason chip companies are not able to attract potential investors and venture capitalists like the software companies these are all some of the important challenges faced by domestic chip companies that's all regarding this news article in this news article we saw about the importance of chip industry for india then we saw some of the steps taken by the government to encourage chip manufacturing then we saw what are all the challenges faced by these companies so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now take a look at this faq article from yesterday's newspaper as the title itself hints this news article talks about women reservation bill the article itself is a critic of the bill so in this news article discussion we shall see some of the important points mentioned in the news article before that the syllabus is relevant to the news article this highlighted here for your reference you can go through it see firstly let us quickly go through the provisions of the bill for our better understanding as you all know recently parliament passed the historic 128th constitution amendment bill called women's reservation bill which provides 33 percentage reservation for women in the lok sabha and state legislative assemblies see this bill was passed with unanimity in both the houses of the parliament this signifies the willingness of all parties of india in passing the bill see the women's reservation bill which is also known as nari shakti vandan adiniyam bill aims to reserve one third of all seats for women in the lok sabha state legislative assembly and the national capital territory of delhi here to ensure equality among all communities it aims to reserve seats for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes in the lok sabha and the state legislative assemblies the reserved seats will be rotated after each delimitation exercise these are all the provisions of the bill now let us see what are the concerns raised by the public and the opposition regarding the bill firstly the opposition have questioned the linking of the implementation of women's reservation with the delimitation exercise in the country this is a concern for them because linking its implementation with the delimitation exercise may result in a prolonged delay in the implementation itself here you should know about the delimitation process delimitation process generally means readjusting the territorial limits of the lok sabha and assembly constituencies secondly updating the number of seats in the assembly and lok sabha in each state see usually the process will rotate the reserved seats to ensure equity but the problem here is it is a periodical exercise which should be based on the data from the latest census but the decadal census of 2021 which was delayed due to covid-19 pandemic is yet to be conducted recently only union home minister amit shah informed the parliament that the census and delimitation exercise would be done immediately after the general election of 2024 this means that women's reservation will not be possible for a few years or at least till 2026 and we have to wait and see when it will be implemented secondly this bill is giving reservation for sc or st women but the opposition raised concerns about not having a sub quota for women from obc 
that is other backward classes for those who don't understand let me explain see there is already reservation for sc and st but there is no separate reservation for obc who constitute more than 40 percentage of the population who are represented poorly some members raised a demand of extending this to the muslim women who are also represented least several other questioned the current bill does not provide women's reservation in the rajya sabha and state legislative councils currently rajya sabha has lower representation of women than the lok sabha women representation is an ideal that must be reflected in both the lower and upper house for empowerment of women and achieving the ideals of democracy so these are all some of the criticism placed upon the bill by the opposition and the public now let's quickly go through what prompted the idea of women reservation in the policy making see the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment which gave 33 percentage women reservation formed a base for the women's reservation bill the reservations were further enhanced by 50 percentage by the various states like bihar andhra kerala and etc thus empowering women though there are lacunae in women's active participation several studies showed the positive effects of including women in the leadership level let us see some of the examples of them first example is from 2001 in 2001 studies were conducted by raghavendra chatobadhyay and nobel laureate esther duflo the studies were conducted on the impact of women's leadership in west bengal they found that women invest more in infrastructure which are directly relevant to the needs of rural women like water fuel and roads and etc and participation of women is high in policy making process if the panchayat leader is a woman secondly in the book and who will make chapatis bishaka datta meenakshi shide they published their findings on all women panchayats in maharashtra they too found that women leaders gave priority to women related problems so many attempts were made in the past as well to bring the preservation for women in the lok sabha and state legislative assemblies the genesis of it was the 81st constitution amendment bill 1996 by the then united front government but the bill did not pass in the house and lapsed with the dissolution of the lok sabha in 1998 the atal bihari vajpayee led national democratic alliance government introduced the bill but lapsed then the bill was reintroduced in 1999 2000 2002 and 2003 but failed to get passed all the time in 2010 the manmohan singh led upa government introduced the 108th constitution amendment bill in the parliament but it was lapsed without getting introduced in the lok sabha itself thus it is clear it took 27 years for us to give justice to more than half of our country's population so to conclude at present there are 82 women in the lok sabha which is the highest in history now after the implementation of the bill there should be at least 181 women who will bring leaps and bounds for the women justice in india so these are all some of the important points that you have to remember about women reservation bill remember the critics and the history of the legislation it is very important so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article this news article highlights the importance of human capital in an economy So in our article let us first understand what is human capital and then about the importance of human capital. So what is human capital? See the term human capital refers to the economic value of knowledge, experience and skills that the working population possesses. To put it in simple words, human capital is defined as the basket of knowledge, skills and other personal characteristics incorporated in the working population that helps them to be productive. the human capital includes some intangible assets like education training intelligence skills health and other human values like loyalty and punctuality here the term intangible assets refers to the resource that has no physical presence despite the human capital has no physical presence it has long term value for a business now how do we measure human capital see there is no consistent method in the world 
to measure human capital. However, the economist calculate the human capital with the help of substitute measures like the number of years spent in the schooling system, rates of enrollment in education, literacy and so on. Now we shall see about the importance of human capital in an economy. See there is a strong relationship between human capital and economic growth. The economist assume that countries with more educated population should have high productivity. This is because the people with more education generally possess high skills which results in rich human capital. The rich human capital with creative knowledge will help to increase productivity on one hand and on the other hand highly skilled humans tend to earn higher salaries which further attracts more people to enhance their skills. Apart from this the high earning people will tend to spend more which aids the growth of economy. This is one importance. Secondly, human capital brings in innovation in some crucial fields. When human capital increases in the field of science, education and management, it leads to increase in innovation. This innovation in turn leads to increased productivity and improved rate of labor participation. All these factors contribute to economic growth. These are all some of the importance of human capital. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice question discussion. Now look at this first question. It talks about IBSA dialogue forum. Statement 1. It was formalized in 2011 during the BRICS summit held in India. See this statement is actually incorrect. IBSA grouping was formalized on 6th June 2003 when the foreign ministers of the three countries met in Brasilia, Brazil. Look at the second statement. The group has set up a trust fund to support the developmental project in least developed countries. See this statement is actually correct. We saw that in the discussion, right? So this statement is actually correct. Look at this third statement. It is headquartered at Brasilia, Brazil. See this statement is incorrect. IBSA does not have permanent secretariat. So the correct answer for this question is option A only one because two statements are incorrect here. Now moving on, look at this question. The text namely Mahavamsa and Deepavamsa are related to which of the following religion? Four religions are given. The correct answer here is Buddhism. Now moving on, how many of the following factors constitute human capital? Five factors are given. First one is experience, creativity, training, education and health. See here all the factors constitute human capital. So the correct answer for this question is option D, all five. Now moving on, look at this question. While you travel through this national park, you can see mountain, shrubs and shola grasslands. The trees of rhododendrons, cinnamon also can be witnessed. The sheep species of Nilgiri Thar can be seen. You can drink water from the river Kunt and Paikara. You can also see Toda tribal dance. So the above mentioned description best describes which of the following national park. The correct answer for this question is option C Mukurti National Park. So the questions displayed here are the main practice questions for you today. Just go through the questions, try to answer it in the comment section. With this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Now thank you for listening.